Hi there, RC Girl here. Today I'm back with part two of my Proline Racing Pro MT 4x4 Monster Truck build. In my first video, I did an unboxing. I'll link it up here, showed you guys what came in the kit. It's a pre built roller, but you have to supply all your own electronics. So I've been doing a ton of research, looking in the forums, seeing what guys are specking this with, and I picked out some awesome electronics by some awesome companies. Today I'm gonna to share those with you guys, go over some of the key components that I picked out and why. I'll show you guys how I hooked it up, do some soldering, get it installed, and get this thing ready to go. So stay tuned. So I'm really excited to finish off this truck. All the components have been arriving over the past week. I've been chasing down the mail guy. So first we have the Teak and Racing Motor ESC combo. This is the RX-4, and then I got the T8 Gen 3 1.8 scale motor. And this thing has a lot of weight to it. It's a really nice, nice motor. I'm excited to try it out. And it's my first censored motor ESC combo. I'll share a little bit about the benefits of a censored setup, and I'll show you guys how I hooked that up in the truck. You're gonna need to do a little soldering. It doesn't have bullet connectors, so you're gonna have to hardwire in your motor to the ESC. So I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that. And then next we have the DX5 Rugged. This just came out this week. This thing is gonna be perfect for a monster truck. It is element proof as well, and it can handle some knocks and dings and everything. I'll do a separate video about this specifically, but I'll show you guys some of the key features and why it's going to be great for this monster truck. It does come with an SR515 receiver. This is a five channel receiver. This is also going to be really great for your crawlers because you can run a separate channel for your winch, your light kit and all that. And then lastly, as I mentioned in my previous video, I did join Reefs RC recently as a team driver. So this is their 400 SC high torque metal gear servo. I'll talk a little bit about it later on in the video. I think this is built for short course trucks, but I think it's also gonna be really great in this 110 scale monster truck. Okay, so let's take a look at our motor ESC combo in more detail and unbox these. This is gonna be good for your rock racers, your scale crawlers, and also since it's element proof and waterproof, it's gonna be great for bashing in the snow and taking it in rocks and all that. So this is gonna be two to four S LiPo compatible. I'm probably gonna be running three or four S in this, so this is gonna be perfect. And as far as programming, this has pretty much everything you could ever need to program. It can also handle 280 amps. I think the RX-8 is a 300 amp ESC, so this is gonna be more than enough for my needs. So I'm gonna be running the T8 Gen 3, and this is a four pole censored brushless motor. So these will match up very nicely together. So this is everything that comes in the RX4 ESC box. Put this aside for now. We got our instructions packet, an attention warning. You can get a hot wire, which is their Bluetooth module, and you can link it to your phone and you could program the ESC directly from your phone, which is super cool. You have to get that separately, unfortunately. Here's the little setup instructions. This is the dielectric grease, and everything in the ESC comes waterproof already except for the sensor port. And then next we have our cable, and this is gonna be how you connect your ESC to your motor and then your ESC to the battery. So this should have enough cable for you to run both of those circuits. And then next it comes with the fan. There's a little fan port here and you can just slide this under the hard case here. And this goes above the heat sink to draw heat away from the ESC. And then we have the ESC. This thing is really cool looking. You can do the programming directly on the ESC itself, so you don't need the hot wire. You can just use the up and down and select buttons here and toggle through all of the modes, but lots and lots of great features to play around with. And I think I'm gonna have to just test some of them out. There are standard settings that it has as defaults, but you wanna make sure that you're selecting the right motor type, selecting the two or three or four S LiPo that you're using, and make sure that some of these are matched to your motor and your battery setup. It has these little divots here where you're gonna solder on your wires. And then next we have our T8 Gen 3. So this is the 1900 KV motor. I wanted something a little bit on the lower end so I could run three or four S, and that puts me in a really nice range. And I'm not really like the crazy, crazy extreme bashers that is gonna send it like 40 feet in the air. So I want something that is gonna be good fit for this truck since it is a little bit beefier, but that's not gonna snap my components every time I go out. So I think the T8 is gonna match really nicely with the RX4 ESC. Oh, this thing's heavy, this is awesome. 
So it has this nice, cool heat sink rib design on the motor. So a lot of the times you have to add an extra external heat sink, but this one just has it as part of the motor can design, which is kind of cool. It's jet black, it looks really cool. Feels super, super smooth as you're turning the shaft. Here we have the sensor port, and this is where you're gonna solder your cables from your ESC. This is the sensor cable here. And this is gonna be one of your more fragile components. And this isn't waterproof, so you're gonna have to make sure that you use grease on the sensor ports to make sure that these connections are waterproof. And what the sensor does is it knows the position of your motor rotor with respect to the four poles in the motor. Without a sensor, your motor's gonna start up and it's not gonna know the position it's in, so you're gonna get that cogging. Cogging is when you first hit the throttle on your car in an uncensored setup, and your motor's trying to find the position of the rotor. A sensor will know immediately when you hit the throttle what position that rotor's in with respect to the poles. So it's gonna be really smooth for you. You're gonna get a lot more low end torque. And I think this would be a great setup for racing. I am not gonna be racing with this, so it might be a little bit overkill for a basher, but I did wanna try it out since this is such a nice truck. I wanted to try some higher end components and I think the T8 Gen 3 is gonna be really awesome. And next we have our Reefs RC 400 SC Servo. As I mentioned, I recently joined them as a team driver. This is my first Reefs RC product. I've heard a ton of great things about them. This is a high torque servo, 400 ounces per inch at 7.4 volts to be exact. Really cool thing about Reefs RC is they have the torque in the name of the servo itself. Super easy to look up what kind of torque servo you need by just looking at the name. It also has all metal gear, so titanium and aluminum. Let's check it out. I think it's a 25 tooth spline count here. So I have a couple aluminum servo horns that I'm gonna try out for this. Some cool stickers, Reefs RC stickers. And then it comes with all the hardware you're gonna need for installing this in your truck. And then last but not least, we have the DX5 Rugged transmitter and our Spectrum receiver. This just came out this week and I think this is gonna be perfect for my monster truck build. I definitely wanna take this out in the elements. I'm gonna do a separate video just on this in the near future, but I'll highlight some of the key features here that I'm really excited about. It is lined with this rubber along all the edges. It also has this chassis brace here. You can take this off and mount either a GoPro, some of your 3D printed parts, a flashlight, a beer koozie someone suggested. So lots of options there. On the back, we have this cool storage container. So you can put some of your more important tools like a little wrench to take off your tires and all that and some cables and such. So really neat little pocket back there. Another thing is one-handed steering. So you can put your thumb on this little knob here and then you can use pretty much the full throw of the wheel using one hand so you can do your photos and all that do some videoing while you're driving this is a five channel transmitter so you're going to be able to have your steering and your throttle and then three auxiliary ports to play around with it has a cool scroll wheel here so it's a touch scroll you can scroll between all of the modes and settings it's not completely waterproof it is splash proof so i think it'll be great for some light rain or taking it out in the snow and make not wanting to have to worry about your transmitter getting ruined. This transmitter is also telemetry capable, so you can run a heat sensor with it and see if your motor ESC are getting too hot. You can also get your speed. And then another sensor is a GPS tracker. So if you wanna get a GPS track of where your car has gone, really cool if you have a crawler, I think that's another add-on that you can get with this as well. Let's take a look in the truck and start assembling some of our components. All right, let's start mapping out where we wanna put all our components. So let's start with the motor here. And our servo is gonna go over here. I'm not quite sure if we want the arm that way or that way. I'll, I'll take a look. Let's wait on the receiver. I've been seeing people run at the RX4 behind the motor here. So I think this should allow enough space to solder on our cables here. And then one great thing about the Proline Pro MT, I mentioned in my unboxing video, is that there's these inserts that you use to set your gear mesh. And so that's the spacing of your pinion gear with your spur gear here. It has different spacers for different pinion gears. So you can select the ones matched to what you're running and it'll keep your motor in place and prevent it from moving around and changing the spacing of your pinion gear with your spur gear. Um, we also need to install our motor fan 
And then I think I might run the receiver right here because then our servo can just wire nicely there. So it allows routing of cables behind here. That's gonna reach there. And we have our motor sensor. It's gonna plug in here and into the motor there. Okay, so we're gonna run red on A, white on B, and black on C. So it's every other one. And then these two terminals here are for our battery connection. One thing they suggest with soldering on your connectors to your ESC is that you do it when it's removed from the car. So I'm gonna take this all out to my garage, get my soldering iron all heated up. So let's take everything outside into the garage and I'll show you guys how I solder this. So we got our motor soldered to the ESC. And unfortunately there was like an error on my camera and it didn't video much of the soldering. So that's a bummer. I'm not that great at soldering anyway, so I would encourage you to get really good before you start messing around with the really nice electronics. There are 10 solder points that you have to do, three on the motor, there's five on the ESC, and then two to whatever battery connector you're using. So make sure that you know what you're doing. I'll put a link to a video in the description box below that I watched before I did all the soldering. They make it look super easy. And I think also your local hobby shops could help you out if you need any soldering help. But otherwise, we're good to go. We have quite a list of things to do to finish off the electronics install. So our servo is gonna be installed this way and they say to have your servo horn at a 90 degree angle with this little arm here. Next, let's install the motor. And what we need to do for this is have the right gear mesh inserts. So you're gonna set the gear mesh depending on your pinion tooth size. So the stock one is 16 tooth. So you're gonna choose the one with the two little dots on it. All right, so now we have to install our pinion gear. So next we have our ESC and we need to install the sensor wire and the fan. Alrighty, so after a little finagling, I had to uninstall the motor again so I could run this wire through the little clips here. I also installed the switch the on and off switch there with some double-sided sticky tape. While I had the ESC out, I also installed the sensor, put some grease in there and both ports in the motor and also in the ESC. I think that's it. I have everything plugged in. I have to do a little cable management here. Uh, make sure that our pinion gear and spur gear aren't chewing up these wires. But other than that, I think we're ready to turn it on. think we're ready to go. Okay, these are 3S LiPos. These are not hard packed, so I would not suggest using one of these in a basher because you can easily puncture one of the cells and that's super dangerous. So I do have to get some hard pack, four cells and perhaps some three cells. So I'm just gonna plug this in temporarily. Okay, got our transmitter on. Nervous. Battery's plugged in. We're gonna turn on the car. All right, everything looks to be powered up. All right. And then let's give it some throttle. Oh my God. Awesome. So you can hear at low speeds, I'm barely pressing the throttle and we don't get any cogging. And that's because we have a sensor, which is freaking awesome. Servo seems super fast. Just need that steering to break in a little bit. There's a little bit of slop in the wheels here. I might have to tighten those down completely, but that might just be part of the car itself. So I would say the hardest parts to me were probably the soldering and the soldering. <laughs> 
So in my next video, I'll show you guys how I set up all the programming for the ESC and walk through a bunch of the modes and settings and show you guys how I set it up specifically for this monster truck. And then I'm gonna paint the body as well. I still need to do that. Hopefully I can get a receiver box. And then after that, I think we're ready to take it outside and do some bashing. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys liked part two of the build series. Let me know if you guys are interested in a more detailed build video. I tried just to give you guys an overview and then some of the lessons learned after I did one component of the install. But if you guys want a more detailed video, let me know in the comments below. See you guys in part three and looking forward to giving this a run. Make sure to like and subscribe as always, or see you later.